हेलो एवरी वन एंड वेलकम टू आई टी एल एस अकेडमी एम्पावर द यूथ सो टूडे इन दिस लेक्चर वी विल गोइंग टू अंडरस्टैंड वट आर द प्रिवलेंस ऑफ फूड बॉन पैथोजन और यू कैन से वॉट इज़ द प्रिवलेंस ऑफ फूड बॉन पैथोजन सो बिफोर अंडर गोइंग द इन टू द इंट्रोडक्शन पार्ट लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड दैट ईच ईयर वर्ल्ड वाइड आई एम नॉट टॉकिंग अबाउट इन इंडिया ओनली ईच ईयर वर्ल्ड वाइड अनसेफ फूड cause about 600 million cases of food borne diseases and and out of that 420 4000 4 lakh 20000 death is there each year nearly 30% of food borne death occur among children under the year, age of 5 years who estimated that 33 million year of healthy lives are lost due to eating unsafe food globally each year and this number is likely an un underestimated so can you see up to which extent this unsafe food causes harm to human population sometimes people are getting number and number of deaths in an year and that is a question of food safety like food borne diseases they are preventable we are we all know that yes this disease is preventable we can prevent it and who has a critical role in taking the global leadership in investment and coordination action across the multiple sectors in order to build a very strong and a very resilient national food safety system where you can provide a consumer with the tools to make a safe food choices and we all know that uh, we as a human being are becoming more aware of what we are eating so in respect to that with the food safety receiving relatively a little political attention especially in developing countries like india china us and many other european countries they have a very reliable data on the actual national burden of food borne diseases and this is very important in think of the essential to draw a public attention and also to mobilize the political will and resources to combat the food borne diseases okay so in this what i am trying to explain that today we live in a very large we have a very large production facilities uh, that distribute the food nationwide and as well as the internationally because different food are export and import across the globe like india is the largest producer of the meat product and um, it has been exported across the nation so and there are different food items that came from other countries we as an indian we export some of our food product across the nation we are getting importing some of the essential food product from other countries right so the globalization of the food supply means that food can become contaminated in one country and it can cause the outbreak of food borne illness in another country means simply if a product is produced in so and so country so the manufacturing of food is done in one country but it's outbreak outbreak of what the food borne illness it can could occur in any other country so here the centralization of the food supply also provide an opportunity for food borne pathogen to cause illness in large proportion of consumers so the food borne pathogens they have a very developed uh, resistance to a traditional preservation techniques like uh, heat refrigeration uh, by treating with acids and with the advent uh, of a new processing and preservation technologies food borne pathogens will adapt to these new technology thus becoming resident resistant to them as well so how we can stop this outbreak of food borne illness so first of all the basic aim of any of the food production industry is to see the food safety 
how you can see the food safety by avoiding the contamination by different types of harmful pathogens like bacteria, viruses, fungi and different other pathogens. So it is very important. Okay, now nowadays what industries are doing just to extend the shelf life just to avoid the contamination of food by different types of pathogen they are using new technologies like uh, of preservation but sometimes what happen if a regular preservatives is again and again is being used in a particular food uh, to avoid them from any sort of contamination sometimes the pathogens becomes more really uh, you can say resistant to those technology okay so whenever the simple answer is uh, the simple thing to understand that pathogen become more resistant to them as well to the new technology so we have to find a solution to avoid the pathogens that could a pathogen cannot get an entry into the food system so this is an estimation uh, I have taken uh, from, uh, uh, from an article that six in one American each year suffer from foodborne diseases. I'm talking about America. So among the six of the people, one person every year they suffer from the foodborne diseases. There is an uh, annual death in, in emerging areas due to the foodborne uh, infections. So about 2 million of annual death is estimated globally due to the foodborne infection. 3,000 uh, 3, annual foodborne diseases death in US it is estimated. So annual cost of the loss, uh, losses and illness caused by foodborne diseases is approx the US 80 millions sorry billions so can you see from this data how much this foodborne illness is affecting any uh, country or you can say they are affecting the economic of countries because major portion of money or economic is lost in due to this uh, foodborne illness so uh, these foodborne diseases is preventable so for it's for every industry to take an action against these type of uh, diseases so that it cannot get more adverse in any of the nation. Okay, and now uh, as we all know that WHO uh, is uh, regularly uh, maintaining uh, uh, criteria of the foodborne diseases means the burden of the foodborne diseases. Uh, is not spread equally across the globe we all know that but uh, it is correlates with the socio-economic development of the countries and the global database that i have just shared on the foodborne diseases it displays an estimate on a interactive map so it is not the same same it is not same that uh, if us is getting more death rate then china will again uh, get the same death rate every country has their uh, different death rate that is caused by the foodborne diseases so uh, we as a uh, consumer we should be more uh, conscious about what we are purchasing and what we are eating so if i give you a background and so uh, historical significance then pathogenic agents in food whether they are microbial like uh, viruses or you can say bacteria or even the parasites or if the uh, pathogens are of uh, in any chemical uh, nature like uh, from any toxins or heavy uh, metals to uh, pesticides residues okay so they carry risk to human health and already i have told you that um, each year it is estimated that 600 million people fall ill due to this unsafe food even the children that is under the age of five years their, whose immu immune system is not so strong okay they are particularly at a very high risk okay that means every year about 1 lakh 25 thousand children die from the foodborne diseases every year so this is not um, uh, wrong if i say that the burden is upon us to make um, the most of the political opportunities and take food safety to the next level okay so 
from decades not from um, uh, recent but from the decades the food borne transmission of pathogenic microorganism has been recognized hazard okay so the predominant food borne pathogens that were known 30 years ago like salmonella clostridium botulinum clostridium uh, perfringens Staphylococcus aureus. So these are certain foodborne pathogen, and they have been joined a widening era of pathogens of bacterial, viral, and parasitic origin. So those pathogens that were uh, only seen associated with the animals have presented as illness-causing agent in human. But apart from that. different types uh, different species of salmonella different species of uh, clostridium um, even the different species of the staphylococcus or so all of these um, species they are so threatened for human health and they are the food borne pathogens because of them the uh, the pathogen uh, food borne illness being caused okay so now what is the scientific basis uh, sorry scientific basis and implication so the first one is incidence so uh, in the recent time it is estimated by the center of disease control and prevention that is known as cdc have placed an incident of food borne illness at 76 million illness like 3 lakhs 2500 uh 25000 hospitalization 5000 death each years in us as already share you with the data in the previous slide so these number present a much larger incidence of food born illness and then can uh, then previously thought one of the most um, predominant cause of bacterial related food born uh, illness is campylobacter species and salmonella species even the uh, gridelia lem lembelia it is one of the most uh, often uh, reported food borne parasites however if you see the vast majority of the food borne illness they are attributed or they are caused by different types of viruses so the food borne pathogens with the highest estimated numbers uh, of death are salmonella species okay different type of campylobacter species even the norwalk uh, vir uh, like viruses so these are the most threatening uh, pathogen that can cause food borne illness in human and humans are uh, at the major risk of the food uh, that is caused by different types of food borne diseases now comes the food borne brown outbreaks so what is the food brown outbreaks Okay so the regulation of the US food uh, supply is primarily divided among two federal agencies that is the US Department of Agriculture and the Food Safety and Inspection Services that is USDA FSIS and the US De Department of Health and Human Services and Food and Drug Administration that is US HHS FDA so the FSIS regulates the meat and uh, poultry as uh, listed in the meat inspection act and poultry inspection act and egg production as listed in the egg production act the FDA regulates all other food commodities as well as exotic uh, animals as listed in the food drug uh, cosmetic act so i would like to share one of the uh, you can say food borne outbreak um, that uh, occurred in year 2024 this year only in on august 22 um so fda and cdc in uh, collaboration with the state and the local partner they have investigated a multi state outbreak of salmonella african and salmonella branderup uh, infection with 5551 in less in 34 states and district of colombia so this was a recent i'm just i'm mentioning the name you can note it down somewhere because in a uh, mcqs or in sometimes in interviews these question arises so in a year 2024 2024 that is uh, august 22 i am writing here 22 august 
and uh, it was an outbreak uh, who has estimated so fda uh, with the cdc in uh, collaboration uh, so they have seen there is an outbreak of salmonella salmonella african african this was the first species since the space is less so i am writing the another species name the first is uh, salmonella africana africana sorry and the second species is salmonella salmonella brand derap is the second species and they caused infection with how much illness double five one illness in 34 state and the district of columbia and um, it was estimated that uh, they have uh, um uh, the laboratories processes and in which they have seen that uh, due to the determinant that uh, cucumbers from the vendors growers um, uh, that is there in uh, Fl uh, florida and uh, because of consuming that the food borne illness occur so this is the latest um uh, food borne outbreak that occur in colombia now estimating the uh, burden of food borne diseases that each year worldwide about uh, already told you that 600 million cases are uh, there due to the food borne diseases and uh, uh, and about 4 lakh 20000 uh, uh, cases are uh, uh, are undergoes death and because of the food borne diseases and 30% of the food borne death occur among the children that is the reason i am saying that children are at the major risk so uh, who um, estimated that 33 million years of healthy lives are lost due to eating unsafe food globally okay this is the data of globally so food borne diseases as already told you that they are preventive preventable and who has a very critical role in taking a global leadership in investment and coordination action across multiple uh, sectors in order to build a very strong and resilient national food uh, safety services that is the reason whenever any restaurant uh, has an opening or if a restaurant wants to come on own board so that restaurant must have all the certificates that ensure that yes this restaurant or this company is abiding all the rules and regulation of the regulatory aspect that is has a gmps fss fssai and um, uh, different types of uh, uh, you know uh, uh, regulatory aspect that is glp gmp already named a few so fsms so why these certificates are important because this shows that yes this country uh, sorry this industry is undergoing all the safety precautions in uh, purchasing uh, uh, in uh, sorry in manufacturing the food items so yes there is a very uh, there is no pathogenic activity that is associated with this food item and yes this food item is safe for the consumption so this is very important for every industries to have these regulatory aspect guidelines now comes the food safety and inspection service that is fsis regulated commodities so fs uh, fsis has a major mission or you can say the basic principle of protecting the public health by preventing the illness from different types of food items like meat poultry and egg products so what basically is the aim or mission of fsis so this um, line is very important because in examination or in interview this can uh, be asked so you must be aware of the first line that yes the basic mission and the basic uh, principle behind fsis is of protecting the public health how you can uh, prevent the public health by preventing the illness from uh, different types of meat 
uh, by poultry product and by the egg product so they um, do this uh, by ensuring that these product are safe wholesome and properly labeled and how they can be done by the regulatory aspect so fsis inspect and regulate these product at various stages of production means at uh, see wherever any food is uh, manufactured at the industries or in the industry so the inspection of the food undergoes at any stages of production means at every stages or you can say various stages of production that includes the slaughtering whenever a an animal is slaughtered in the slaughtering house so at that point of time a inspection is done just to check what is the method of slaughtering how uh, slaughtering is done whether the knives and the machine are uh, properly cleaned or not whether the place is hygienic or not whether the animal that is going under the slaughter house is clean or not because there is a chances of the physical contamination also that is known as a cross contamination from the animal's body into the after cutting uh, uh, the animal so it can have any uh, dirt or dust or different types of uh, uh, things are there on animal's body so the animal should be clean should be properly sanitized before it gets slaughtered apart from the slaughtering processing how it is being uh, processed how the slaughtering is processed how the packaging how the cleaning of the meat is done that is uh, one of the uh, main areas uh, of inspection and of course at last the packaging facilities how the meat product and other food items are being packed so this is again in very important for a person who is checking uh, uh, the production uh, production of uh, different types of food items that how it is actually packaged because packages uh, packaging play a very important role in maintaining the uh, you can say shelf life of the food product may maintain the safety of the food product okay so this is very important so uh, coming to the um, second para of this that fsis uh, inspect and regulate i've already told you so these inspection uh, why this inspection is so important so of course this inspection helps to prevent the contamination and uh, they ensure the compliance with safety standard that are science based to ensure the food safety and food defense okay so that is the reason it is very important to have a very close monitoring of food at every stages of production whether it's packaging whether it's a slaughtering whether it's processing or whether they are in the transport area so this is very important whenever the to ensure the food safety and food defense so the fsis has four act which are the federal meat inspection i'm just mean mentioning it with a pen so that you can have a closer monitoring of every so the first is the federal meat inspection act it is one of the f because fsis has four act first is federal meat inspection act second is the uh, poultry production product inspection act then the third is the egg production act uh, production egg product inspection act and the last is human uh, method of slaughtering act because slaughtering uh means the method that is used for slaughtering is again is a, a very much uh, um, important to have an understanding that which type of method is being used so as a food business uh, operator processing handling or packaging any of these product understanding the comply with the four main act that is very crucial uh, that is the federal meat inspection act poultry product uh, inspection act ex product uh, uh inspection act and the human method of slaughtering so in examination or in interviews this question may arises so you must have the knowledge of all these act that is the crucial act of fsis now fsis works like protecting the public health how they uh, by undergoing the close monitoring of how the food is being processed then ensuring the food quality they uh, after checking or after having a close monitoring so they assure that yes the now the food is safe for human consumption means the food is having a good quality 
then preventing any food fraud means food fraud uh, undergoes like any sort of contamination any uh, sort of microbial or pathogenic activities then uh, they uh, also helps in pro uh, promoting the fair trade practices so these are the work area of fsis again i am repeating protecting the public health ensuring the food quality preventing the food fraud and promoting fair trade practices now comes the one of the most important topic of today's discussion that is fda that is us food and drug so we all know that fda that is a food and drug administration it is responsible for protecting the public health by assuring the safety efficiency efficacy and security of human and veterinary drug biological product medical devices our nation's food supply cosmetic product that uh, emits radiation so fda is everywhere and fda also provide a very accurate science based health information to public that is the reason every food product not only the food product any biological product any veterinary drug or any uh, cosmetic uh, product they sh always have fda approval if you check any cosmetic or any drug or any food item uh, 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 in their label there is fda approval so this fda is just responsible for protecting the public health and how they are doing this by ensuring the safety efficacy and security of human okay so the food and the drug administration that is fda it is an agency within the us department of health and human services that is hhs uh, and oversees food medical and related products for safety and efficacy so as the oldest comprehensive and um, and we all are aware that fda it is one of the most uh, one of the oldest comprehensive consumer protection agencies in the us so the fda is encountering um, the increased responsibility uh, due to related advancement and they are enhancing the consumer safety and countering uh, and preventing supply chain shortages and increasing the tech technological and data modernization and that are current priorities for fda so as you can see that in, in mcqs or in interviews this question may arise can you name the one of the oldest comprehensive uh, consumer protection agency so it is fda that is within our us department of health and human services so what actually it is uh, what actually the um, is the agenda of fda so the first agenda of fda is to public health and consumer protection means to protect the public health and to protect the consumer health it is one of the first agenda of fda now comes the second that is a modernization to keep uh, pace with evolving uh, evolving science and technology then at last the emergency preparation and response now if it if let's say for a minute if there is a um, contamination in food products so fda also helps in emergency preparation and response to that pathogen how to avoid the pathogen at the last moment so in this is the agenda of fda now the regulatory industrial and international com implications so as we all know that microorganism they have a tendency to adapt to any change in the environmental condition okay so the industry and the government um, they must have assessed whether a new control measure should be a uh, pursued or not so in prior in uh, 1991 it was never thought that uh, uh, that the high acid content of uh, unpasteurized juice would allow the survival and the growth of uh, food one pathogen so in year 1991 there was a case that uh, um, uh, due to a very high acidic content means nobody understand matlab kisi ne socha hi nahi tha ki that a high acid content of a unpasteurized juice would allow 
since because uh, some uh, organism cannot survive at a very high acidic condition so but uh, uh, this was a case in 1991 that a high acid content of a uh, unpasteurized uh, juice uh, they allow the survival uh, and the growth of different kinds of food borne pathogens so in response to this outbreak that is there in 1991 associated with uh, unpasteurized uh, juice uh, product a new uh, regulation was implemented by fda to prevent the future outbreak so what was the new regulation so the new regulation involved the use of warning label as well as hazard analysis critical control system that the industry has also developed new means to process and produce the food products okay so many of these uh, method utilizes technology that will extend the shelf life and maintain the fresh characteristics of the food so as you can see that quickly fda uh, found a um, Uh, you can say solution that what could be done if uh, this case uh, uh, arrives in the near future so uh, they implemented many other um, uh, uh, warning and uh, like if uh, like hasap system uh, system should be uh, have a uh, well labeled in the food items and the industry should have should also adapt new means of processes and produce food product and many of these method utilizes the technologies like uh, how to extend the shelf life of the product and uh, how to maintain the fresh characteristics of the food so that brings to the end of the lecture i hope you have understood the lecture if you have any doubt any queries uh, related to the lecture so you can simply leave your queries on the comment section below and follow itls academy on instagram facebook twitter youtube whatsapp linkedin Pre, uh, you can also visit our website that is www.itlsacademy.com this is our helpline number as well as this is our whatsapp number also that is 7080833450 you can simply call on this number and get updated if you have any queries at last don't forget to subscribe itls academy and yes press the bell icon to get more updates on the lecture thank you for watching please do like share and subscribe itls academy thank you once again